So, I know a lot of you guys out there are already DevOps wizards, but I'm here to introduce an automation tool that I really like called Ansible. And this is for those of you who are just getting into DevOps and want to get into automation, which is an important component. And so I'm not here to, I'm not a marketer for Ansible, I'm just a high school student who really likes it. And so Ansible is basically, it's an automation tool that's really simple to learn and you can start using it within a few hours. It's, it's really good for configuration management. And um, you can really use it at any scale. So let's say you're starting off with, on your own machine, you have a couple of Vagrant boxes pulled up. Um, you can start running Ansible scripts on those right away. And let's say you want to go on to a larger scale. Let's say that you want to um, create auto scaling groups um, in AWS. There's an EC2 module for that. You can also um, use Ansible Tower, which is really good, which is by Red Hat, which is um, really good for um, implementing Ansible on a larger scale, and it also does other things such as orchestration. And so SSH is the main protocol used for Ansible. And those of you who use Windows a lot, um, never fear. Um, Ansible also has a capability of communi communicating with Windows hosts using PowerShell. So yeah. And so Ansible has what's called um, an agentless architecture. Um, all you need on your machines that you're maintaining, all you really need is the ability to communicate with SSH. And you need a version of Python installed on your servers. So that's all you really need. And what makes Ansible so simple and powerful to use is that it's written in Python. So let's say that you want to create your own functionality for Ansible and you want to develop your own module. Uh, Python's a really simple and powerful language to use, so that's what makes it so convenient to develop modules. And with YAML syntax, which is what you write Ansible playbooks in, um, it's really simple to start creating playbooks right away. Because when you look at YAML syntax, and I'll be showing you an example of um, some Ansible code, um, it, al it almost looks like pseudocode, and you can tell right away what it's doing. And so Ansible playbooks are basically the main unit of Ansible. Every script is called a playbook, and it's basically a YAML file that defines tasks for a set of hosts. Another thing that comes with Ansible is a ton of modules. And so modules are the basic fun functionality behind Ansible. And so there's a variety of modules that work with a bunch of different tools, such as like chat apps, and I'll be showing a lot of um, different tools that Ansible works with. And so here's an example of an Ansible script. So it's a playbook, it's titled web server. It connects to a bunch of hosts that are defined in a separate inventory file, which is a basic text file. And, it's on, and the hosts are under the category web in that text file. And um, the first task is named install engine X, and it uses the yum module, which is, you can see right there. And it makes sure a package named nginx is present. And then the second task is ensure nginx is running. And so it uses the service module to make sure that a package named nginx has started and that it's enabled. Um, I have a picture of a developer here um, <laughs> who's developing modules for Ansible. Um, you can develop modules to fit your own needs because uh, a lot of the modules, even though they're so extensive, you might have something that you want to garner specific to your ecosystem. And there are a lot of technologies that Ansible works with, such as AWS, Azure, HipChat, Django. I could just spend the next 30 seconds listing all of them. But um, you can really use it with anything, and that's what makes Ansible so powerful and so convenient. Um, you can uh, just you can integrate it with, with Slack rooms, which um, makes your rooms come alive. And let's say every time you want, you want to push something to GitHub, you want a notification in Slack, it's really convenient to use. and um, it has a diverse role in DevOps. So Ansible Galaxy is what I have here, and that's basically um, a benefit of the open source community behind Ansible. Um, basically, you can find a lot of Ansible roles on there, which are basically large folders of playbooks, and they're, and they're free to use. You can use them in your own systems. Ansible Tower is the en enterprise level of Ansible, which you can use um, on, in larger scale, but really you can get as much functionality as you can from just using Ansible Core. And so the best way to start using Ansible is using the Ansible documentation. They have really good um, resources on their website. They also have a lot of Git repos where you can see samples of Ansible code and Ansible roles. And as I said before, there's Ansible Galaxy where you can just get started. And here I have a piece of weather. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, 
I just copy pasted everything on the, Ans on the How Ansible Works website, and I just um, made a word cloud out of it so that you could see what Ansible really cares about. And so I hope that you guys learned a little something from this talk. You learned how to start Ansible wizardry or get started in DevOps. And thank you for listening to me talk for five minutes. <laughs>